Hello, Reza Gaming here, and welcome back to another episode of Sandbox Showcase, a series where I talk about problems in Oxygen Not Included and how you can solve them easily and efficiently. So today, we're going to be looking at the Liquid Sulfur Geyser. This was added as part of the Spaced Out DLC, and it produces liquid sulfur. And sulfur is a pretty interesting resource. It's uh, currently under the Miscellaneous tab, but the actual use of it is for agriculture. You can feed sulfur to sweetles and they'll produce sucrose and then you can feed the sucrose to grub grubs and they can turn into dirt and water. So this duck geyser, once processed by the critters, is effectively dirt and water. And having a dirt geyser is pretty nice. Um, but actually taming one of these things is a bit interesting. Uh, the, gu the liquid sulfur comes out at about 165 degrees C and sulfur itself actually condenses at... 115 degrees ish into a solid so you'll want to cool it down before you feed it to your critters because the critters won't want the ranch to be at this sort of temperature but one thing that makes this a slight bit of a wrinkle is that sulfur does not conduct heat very well the liquid has a thermal conductivity of 0.2 and then the sulfur uh, the solid sulfur also has a thermal conductivity of 0.2 and cooling a liquid isn't usually too bad because liquids are quite conductive anyways they get quite a multiplier to their conductivity just for being a liquid but the solid sulfur debris does not conduct heat very well at all if you were thinking you could solve this like a metal volcano where you just have a steam room and you circulate the solid sulfur around in the steam it's not going to work because the sulfur isn't going to transfer the heat quickly enough out of the steam into the um into the steam to go through the steam turbine the sulfur is just going to keep piling up and up and you're just going to end up with a room with a load of hot sulfur that isn't actually cool enough to condense so today i'm going to show you how i like to condense these sulfur geysers there's a few different ways and i've tried some sort of overcomplicated ways in the past with uh low pressure pipes cooling them in like a big solid block but i've i've had a think and this is a, a bit of a simpler way which i prefer doing so so let's get started so first of all, you want to build some insulated tile. And what I'd recommend is building a sort of five, five by four chamber. And this will be big enough for you to sort of just fit all of your conveyor rail stuff in here. So if we just vacuum this room out, there you go. So the important step of this is we're going to have a liquid in this room that the solid sulfur debris can exchange heat with. Because it'll be submerged in a liquid, it will get that multiplier bonus to its conductivity, and it'll actually be able to cool fast enough for you to be able to remove it from the uh, sulfur geyser. So the liquid of choice is crude oil. This, um, this won't boil in case the room doesn't get cooled, and it has very good thermal conductivity and not too much heat capacity. It's perfect for what you'd want here. And you want to put a lot in, and you want to make sure that it doesn't you want to make sure that it doesn't um, block the geyser. So let's say 800 kilograms per tile. You could do it with less. It will just um, it will just heat up more quickly. And you want a nice amount of thermal mass in here so that the temperature is fairly consistent. And then what we'll do as well, um, we can just stick a we can stick say a high pressure gas vent in here, and we can just fill this whole room with hydrogen gas up to 20 degrees. I'm not going to fill it with steam, and you'll see why in a minute. But the hydrogen is nice because eventually the room will be cold. So you want the gas that can be in there while it's cold, while still being quite conductive and still having a decent amount of heat capacity. So we'll just fill this with 20 kilograms per tile of hydrogen. So there we go. We'll keep our, our vent there. Now, the next stage is... This is going to have a few different layers to it. So let's actually just remove all of this stuff first. So we're going to seal this room off. And what we'll do to get into here, uh, once the um, once you've got the gases and the liquids in here, you pour the oil in first and you fill it with hydrogen. But what I like to do with rooms like this is... What I like to do is I like to remove the tile here. And what you can do is you can get a little bit of naphtha. You can get naphtha from melting plastic and it's a very viscous liquid that you can stack up to quite a large amount per tile. And I like to use this, let's say about 20 kilograms worth. 
You can stick a blob here and you can stick a blob here. And then the naphtha won't move from here. And then what we'll do is this is a room where we're going to have a Thermo Aqua Tuna. So we're going to stick that here. And then if we want to get into this room again, you can just remove this tile and that will stay a vacuum that your dupes can traverse through. And then we'll just put a little ladder here. In fact, we could have, we could have the ladder here as well. Um, so we'll put a little ladder here so that the dupes can actually climb down to the geyser and look at it. So the next thing I'm going to do is gonna, I'm going to put in how we're actually going to cool this down. Because we need to take the heat out of the sulfur so that it condenses into the solid. And we then need to condense the solid down to about room temperature. You can make it a little bit colder if you want, but there's no point because it's going to ultimately go to a Sweetle slash Grub Grub Ranch complex. So we're going to try and cool it to 30 degrees. So we're going to want a Thermo Aqua Tuner in here. Um, you can make this out of gold amalgam in a pinch and it won't get too hot. The Thermo Aqua Tuner has a default overheat temperature of 125 instead of 75. So if you build it out of gold amalgam, it can go up to 175 without overheating. Um, this might be okay, but the issue with this is that the gold amalgam isn't super conductive. So if the rooms, if if the steam turbine stops working for whatever reason, this might overheat quite quickly. Um, I'd usually just recommend building them out of steel. So we're gonna make this one out of steel, but you can use gold amalgam in a pinch. So we'll put that in here. And then what you do, so say you had a, a room full of gas, like say you haven't vacuumed this out, you don't actually need to pump to remove any gases from this room. What you do is you would fill it with, again, some crude oil just for conductivity. Um, we could put, say, you don't have to actually put that much in here. We'll put, say, 20 kilograms per tile in. So that could just go in like this. And you can just pour that in with a bottle emptier or doing the bottle delivery method or uh, a pedestal method. It doesn't really matter. So you pour that in. And then after that, you will pour some water in which you'll boil. Uh, you can pour salt water in here as well. You'll end up with some salt debris in here. I wouldn't recommend polluted water just in case it off gases. Um, and you end up with some polluted oxygen here. So we'll just put about 100 kilograms per tile of water in here. That'll be enough for some good thermal mass. And it will turn into steam eventually with this thing. There. So then, once you pour these in here, you might want to make this an airflow tile just while you're doing it. So that the gas in this room exits via this airflow tile. You don't end up with a blob of gas here. But then you can just replace that tile afterwards and then you can just seal this up again. And what you can actually do is you can, again, do the naphtha trick. So we can just put some naphtha in here. And again, about 20 kilograms will do. You don't want to go too high, otherwise it will start to flow into this bit with the oil. Not that that really matters, but you want to make sure there's a little bit of naphtha left here after this converts to steam. So we've got a thermo aqua tuna room. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put the steam turbine up here. So this is a fairly, fairly conventional steam turbine room. We're going to make it four tall. And what we're going to do is we're going to have the naphtha bit be here. And we're going to tile this bit off here. So then again, we can just put the naphtha here. And then if a dupe wants to get into the steam turbine room later, all they need to do is deconstruct this tile. That will be vacuum because it'll be between the naphtha. And then the dupe can just climb down here to the steam turbine. So it doesn't really matter what material you make this out of. You can make this out of lead and it's not going to overheat. Um, the overheat temperature of this building is 1000 degrees. And the lead will melt way before then. But the building will stop working at 100 degrees. This room is never going to be above 100 degrees, ideally. So you can just build this out of lead. And you'll need a little bit of plastic. Um, I'm going to rotate it and put it there. And then again, uh, in terms of what's actually in this room, you want to put a little bit of crude oil in here just for thermal conductivity reasons so you can just stick that in here that's just fine and then we'll fill the rest up with hydrogen gas again we'll just put a high pressure vent in here doesn't really matter where you put that and we'll just um, fill this room with up to 20 kilograms per tile of hydrogen gas for extra thermal mass and for extra conductivity so that could just go in like this and you'll usually have plenty of hydrogen to do this with from your electrolyzers. So you can just shove it all in here. So that's the basic premise. The basic premise is we're going to have pipes running from this thermo aqua tuner. First to cool the sulfur down to temperature and then to cool the uh, steam turbine. And it's all going to be in one loop. 
So let's actually do the let's actually do the plumbing first. So what I'll do is I'll just put in a little pump here. Um, you'll want to deliver some polluted water here. You want to fill it with polluted water because A, that liquid has a lot of specific heat capacity. Um, so it'll make the thermo aquatuna more efficient. And B, you can cool it all the way down to minus 20 if you really want to. So it's a little bit more versatile than water or salt water in that regard. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you made the pump out of unless, you're, unless you've got a really hot polluted uh, water source, in which case you use gold amalgam. So just fill a little tub with some polluted water. There you go. And then we'll actually start the pipe work. So what this will look like. So first of all, the steam turbine. We want to output the steam turbine water. Um, I'm not really fussed about using this for conductivity, so we'll just send this, say, down here. And then we'll dump it right next to the... We'll dump it right next to the Thermo Aquatuna to help keep that cool. So you want to use igneous pipe... Where, um, igneous rock when making insulated liquid pipe. It's got the... It's going to not overheat too quickly. It's not a very good conductor. Um, ceramic is probably overkill. Just make sure it's insulated pipe. It doesn't really matter what the rock is. Just insulated pipe on its own will be good enough. Um, if you want, you can actually make this radiant. You can actually make this radiant to get a bit more conductivity with this going, but the water flow through here is going to be minimal compared to the really cold uh, polluted water running past this, so it doesn't really matter. So then the actual polluted water. So what we'll do is we'll send it from this pipe here, and I'll just put a bridge here because we're going to bridge it onto the main loop. So the polluted water is going to come down here. And I'm just going to do insulated pipe for all of this. You don't really need to do insulated liquid pipe in the insulated tiles. Regular liquid pipe in the insulated tiles can be used in a pinch and it'll still be insulated fairly well. But if you've got the rock, you might as well just insulate it. All. So then we're going to send this here and that's going to plug into the thermo aqua tuner here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a we're going to put a liquid pipe thermo sensor on here. Uh, you want to make this out of something that's not going to melt if it gets super hot in here. I mean, it's pro like even if this breaks, it's probably not going to get above 300 in here. So you probably could use lead. I'm just going to use copper. It doesn't really matter too much. So then you'll plug that into here and you'll set this sensor to send a green signal to the thermo aqua tuner if the liquid is above, say, minus 5 degrees. Um, you can set, you can set this lower. It's just the, what you want the target temperature to be. Minus five is about as low as you'd go because otherwise you run the risk of starting to freeze your polluted water in the pipe. Um, but you don't have to have it quite this low. One thing to note is this design does consume power. You are using power to actively cool the sulfur. You're not going to generate more power than you uh, consume. So in this case, we're going to use the uh, handy dev generator to generate the power for this. But um. Just about any power source to do. If you've got excess hydrogen to fill these rooms, you could probably use some hydrogen generators. I'll, I'll do the wiring in a bit. So that pipe's going to go in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to send the cool liquid out here. But what we're also going to do is we're going to have an overflow on the thermo aqua tuner. We're going to send it here and then put a bridge here. And what that will do, that will put the bridge output directly after the thermo aqua tuner output. So this means that the cold liquid chilled from the thermo aqua tuner will always be prioritized over the rest of the liquid. But if the liquid doesn't need cooling, it will bypass the machine and just flow into here instead. So the loop will always fill with chilled liquid. So that can go there. And then we just start cooling down this um, steam turbine room. So what you do is you put in a radiant liquid pipe. Uh, pretty much any metal, any uh, refined metal will do. But you want to go with something that's more conductive than the others. Aluminium is the absolute best material for this, but if you haven't got that, cobalt is pretty good as well. Um, if we just compare those, I mean... Aluminium... Oh, I forget, it's called aluminium in this game. That's silly. Uh, so this has a thermal conductivity of 205 BTUs per meter uh, seconds C. So that's very high. And then if we put the cobalt in... That gives you about 100. Uh, so the other metals are a bit further below that. If um, if you're using lead because it's super abundant, that is uh, 35. So that's, that's not particularly good. But it should still be good enough. 
I would recommend building this out of um, aluminium, but cobalt will do in a pinch. Just the less conductive your metal pipe is for this, the longer it might take for the sulfur to clear the room. But I feel like I feel like most metal pipes should work with this. So then what we'll do is we'll just put the, the radiant pipe in like this. It'll go through the hydrogen first and then it'll go through the oil. And where it's going through the oil, it'll be the most conductive. And it's very important that we get this oil cold. So once it's done in there, we'll just send it out of here with an insulated pipe. And connect that in there. And then what we'll do is we'll send all of that liquid up to the steam turbine after it's cooled the sulfur geyser and its associated materials. So that will go in here and then again we'll just run the radiant liquid pipe through the oil and then we'll run that up here through the rest of the hydrogen. So that will help cool down this room and then we just loop it back, we just loop it back to where this bridge is and then that will feed all the way back to the thermo aqua tuna. There are other things you can do with the pipe if you want but this is just a neat way that I like to do it. Um, so that's all the piping done and then the final part is just the actual shipping details. So what will happen, because this will be cooled down, the sulfur will actually immediately eject from the geyser and immediately cool into a blob of debris. It won't form a liquid layer on top of this at any point unless it's super hot, which it probably won't get, provided you're actively cooling it. So what we'll do is we'll put in an auto sweeper to just, um, to just pick up that sulfur. You, you can be a little bit liberal with what you're using for this. This isn't a steam chamber. This room is going to be cold most of the time. So if you want, you can use... I wouldn't recommend using lead in here because this room could feasibly get above 55 degrees if you're not careful. But you should be absolutely fine making it out of copper or some other refined metal. You could even make it out of cobalt if you wanted, but you might as well make it out of something with a um, 125 degree overheat just in case. Uh, but steel steel is probably overkill. So we can just put that there. And then we can put the conveyor loader in as well. Um, again, this can be made out of copper. So we'll put that there. And then what we're going to do... So we'll build the conveyor rail. This conveyor rail doesn't have to be anything fancy. It can be made of whatever metal you have lying around. It's not going to melt in here. So you can bring that down here. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that the sulfur debris runs through the oil. This is where almost all of the heat exchange is going to go. The debris is going to cool down the oil, and then the oil is going to exchange temperature with the hydrogen. But there's not going to be a lot of temperature exchange between the debris and the hydrogen at all. So what you want to do is you want to keep the, um, the sulfur looping through this oil. So what we'll do, I mean, what we're going to do is we're just going to loop it back over here. It's not a very big room. So we're going to set it up here and we're going to put a conveyor rail thermo sensor on here. Now the thing is, this requires some advanced tech. At the start, this should cool enough just doing one loop through here that it will get to around sort of 40, 50 C. So you don't need to put this in right away if you don't have the data banks for it. But I would, I would recommend just hooking it up with the automation right away if you can. But if you're doing this super early, you don't even really need to worry about this. Just dump it immediately and it should be cool enough for general use, but eventually you'll want to keep it circulating in here until it gets below your target temperature. So the conveyor shut off. Contrary to popular belief, this building does not overheat. You can build this out of anything. So we're gonna build this out of lead. There's literally no overheat temperature on this, and I don't know why. Maybe the devs didn't want this to overheat. So we're gonna put that in there, and then the conveyor rail is gonna go around here, and if the... Let's hook this up with some automation wire. Again, lead is fine for this. So if this um, material or whatever debris you have in here is below your target temperature, let's say 30 degrees, then this shutoff will activate. And then, I mean, just for demonstration purposes, we'll just put a chute here. And it will come out of the shutoff and go into the chute and it will drop your debris down here. Uh, let's just make this an insulated room. We'll, we'll put some abyss light here. Why not? Let's be fancy. There you go. So this is an insulated room uh, with a vacuum in it. So you'll see what temperature the debris comes out of. 
And then if it's still too hot, it will just recirculate. So what we'll do is we'll just send it up around here. It'll come back down here. And then what we'll do is we'll put a bridge here. This bridge is very important. And then the bridge will connect onto the loader. So what this will do is it will prioritize the bridge, which means that material that's already in the loop will keep circulating through the loop before any extra material is added from the loader. So you're always going to be cooling down one batch, and then once a cool lump of debris leaves, a, a hot lump of debris will be loaded on. So that's how you want to set this up with the bridge first and then the loader. And that's pretty much it. This is this is pretty much the entire build. So all we need to do now is wire it up. So conductive wire, you can make this out of lead, it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's just... Let's just send it down here. It looks like it works fairly well, and then that can go here. So there we go, this is all set up correctly. Uh, we have our dupe here to make sure the liquid physics is working well on this planet. And we'll just uh, activate it and you can see for yourself how it works. So yeah, these vents are done. We'll need to set this to grab anything that appears in here. As you can see, a lump of sulfur has already come out. This oil is at 20 degrees. The sulfur has come out at about 62 degrees in this case. We aren't cooling this yet, but we'll uh, just leave this to run. So you can see the polluted water is being pumped in. We have the sulfur on the conveyor rail. At the moment this is going around, it's quite hot, but you'll notice it drops heat somewhat quickly in the oil. And then it also drops a little bit more heat in the hydrogen, but not too much. So this is going into here. The heat in the room is rising at the moment because it's not being actively cooled. Now we have the actively cooled polluted water coming out here, and that's going to start chilling this room a lot. And the important thing is that it chills the oil down. But eventually we'll start to see some sulfur come through that's not quite as hot as it comes out of the geyser, and it should just drop here. So a quick note on the maths. So this sulfur geyser is erupting 5.5 kilograms per second. We want to reduce its temperature by, say, 135 degrees C. And the, the heat capacity of sulfur is 0.7. So you do 5.5 times 135 times 0.7. And I'm not gonna do that in my head, <laughs> but the number is around 400 KDTUs of heat per second and that's while the geyser is erupting um one thing you'll notice is that the thermo aqua tuna exchanges 585 kdtus of heat while it's using a pipe full of water so provided this is running 100 percent of the time it is powerful enough to actively cool this room even while the geyser is erupting and as you can see the hydrogen temperature has dropped to about 25 the oil temperature has dropped to about 22.5 so this room will cool even while the geyser is erupting. And obviously while the geyser isn't erupting, it will cool a lot faster. And as you can see, we've dropped out a little bit of sulfur. This is at the right temperature. It's at about room temperature. And what you could do, because it's going to be cold on this uh, conveyor, and it's going to be going through minimal gas pressure, it's not going to exchange too much heat while it's on the rails. So you, once it's at room temperature, you can just send it on a normal rail. Just send it to your sweetle and grub grub branches, and then the sweetles can just eat the sulfur. As you drop this right in front of them, you can drop it into a conveyor receptacle and then that can be auto swept into a feeder. That's very convenient. Or if you have just one, a shoot will do. But the important thing is, don't feed the grub grubs uh, the, the sulfur because they're only 10% efficient at converting sulfur into dirt and water. You want to feed it to the sweetles who are 50% efficient. Let me double check that. Here's a Sweetle. Yeah, so the Sweetle converts 20 kilograms per cycle of sulfur into 10 kilograms per cycle of sucrose. And then the Grub Grub, so that will eat 50 kilograms of sulfur per cycle and turn it into only five kilograms per cycle of mud. And it will turn 30 kilograms per cycle of sucrose into 30 kilograms per cycle of mud. And then with the mud, you can either use a sludge press to turn that into reasonably cool dirt and water or, if you fancy being fancy, you can boil the mud in a steam chamber somewhere into dirt and steam. But obviously that's going to heat it up and then you're going to want to cool it down again. I'd probably just use a sludge press. It depends how many dupes you have or how much excess power you have. But uh, one thing to note, 
the ratio of sweetles to grub grubs you're gonna want i've talked more about this in my how to use all the oil wells video but you're gonna want about nine sweetle ranches to four grub grub ranches which is about 72 sweetles to 24 grub grubs i.e three sweetles per grub grub so having one so having two sweetle ranches and one grub grub branch is about right you don't need to fill the grub grub branch all the way and th that will be enough to handle about a single sulfur geyser's worth two sweetle ranches one grub grub branch with a bit of empty room so you can see we've dumped quite a little bit of um room temperature sulfur out of here now this is going to stop erupting in a minute we'll speed it up and just see how that goes as you can see the loop has filled and it's circulating but it's not overfilled it's very important that you have the output ports right next to each other for the thermal aqua tuna and the liquid bridge when you're doing this and that will ensure that the pipe doesn't overfill and now we're just going to speed through it and uh We'll wait for this guys to stop erupting. So that's stopped erupting now. And now you can see this, this room is starting to cool quite quickly. The sulfur is going into the oil and it's coming out quite a bit cooler. And the thermal aqua tuna is running. You can see this water is almost at boiling temperature. <laughs> Harold is hanging out up here. He hasn't got an outhouse. Feels bad, man. It wouldn't be an Ariza gaming video if a dupe didn't pee themselves. So now you can see the water is turning to steam. Uh, some of the naphtha came out of this bit. That's okay. Um, you might want to put like a little bit less naphtha in here so that it doesn't it doesn't all come out like this. Because um, at the moment this isn't going to use all the steam turbine ports. But this is actively cooled, so you shouldn't really have any problem cooling down all this steam. Let's just uh, remove that a little bit. There you go. And this will start running in a minute. You can see now the oil is, is getting down to nice cold temperature. And then we've, we've dumped over a, a ton of sulfur and it's been just about a cycle. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this build works. It's not too complicated. Uh, you will need a little bit of tech for the conveyor rail thermo sensor. But if you if you're not if you're doing this early game uh, and you don't mind your sulfur being a little bit hotter, um, it's not a problem. I would recommend using oil for this just so that it doesn't accidentally boil. You don't want a liquid that would really boil in here. And the the oil is conductive, so yeah, I, I would recommend using oil for this. Petroleum is also good. So now we've got the steam turbine working as well. This is being kept nice and cool by the loop as well. So that's not causing any issues there. And as you can see, all the sulfur is dumped off. Now it's going to start erupting again. The sulfur is going to go into the loader. What temperature is that sulfur at? It's about 42 degrees now. The colder it is in the room, the colder it will come out of the geyser. So if you fill this with cold hydrogen and cold oil at the start, it will come out cold sooner. And again, you might not need this. Because at the moment it's just going to dump all of the sulfur because it's all immediately cool enough now. Apart from a little bit. And you can see all the water's being dumped back in here. This, is, this isn't getting too hot, but it is at about sort of 140 degrees. If we had a gold amalgam one, it might not be conducting its heat as well. You might want to have a bit more oil in here to increase the thermal conductivity. Something else that you should definitely do with this is put in some temperature plates. Um... The temperature plates will encourage uh, thermal exchange between the oil and the hydrogen even more. Uh, if you've been to an oil biome, I'd recommend making them out of diamond. Diamond is extremely thermally conductive. If you don't have that, granite isn't too bad. And if you have a lot of refined metal, you can use refined metal. But we're just going to use diamond. Because I, I, I would recommend you having oil before you do this. And again, you can put it up here with the steam turbine as well. You can also put it in here with the with the, the aqua tuna. So you can see now that's going to cool the aqua tuna right down. Just bear in mind that when you have the 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 temperature plates over um, with an edge overlapping the insulated tile, it is going to start heating up the insulated tile a bit faster. But that's usually not going to cause you too many problems. And yeah, as you can see, the steam turbine is hot. 
Uh, the sulfur is coming out somewhat hot, but these two rooms are both being kept cool by this machine, even while the geyser is erupting. So yeah, as you can see, the uh, the thermo aqua tuna room is hot, but the steam turbine room and the sulfur geyser room are both being kept cold, even while the geyser is erupting, and we're ending up with the nice room temperature debris. Uh, so yeah, that's the build. Um, hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I always like using Sweetles and Grog Rubs on my runs when I can. I think it's quite powerful and um, definitely a water source that shouldn't be sniffed at. Because to be honest, I find it easier to set up one of these than a cool steam vent tamer sometimes. <laughs> now, an interesting fact. This is on the rusty oil asteroid here. <laughs> and So this isn't the main asteroid where I found the sulfur geyser. And you actually need the spawn a dupe here for liquid physics to behave at all. And I was very confused when I did this at first because it didn't work and that's because we didn't have a duplicate here. We just found it in debug mode. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, uh, feel free to subscribe Areno and uh, you can see more videos about um, how to solve problems in oxygen not included. We do a lot of tier list videos in this channel as well. We have a lot of meme videos I've made over the, <laughs> over the months as well. Uh, there is a Discord channel where we hang out and we post builds and memes, mostly to do with oxygen not included, but we also play a little bit of Dyson Sphere Program, some Noiter, a few other games. And I stream live on Twitch. We are just about to start a new series, The Lazy Lumberjacks, where we colonize a Fovia asteroid. And this is actually the seed that we're going to be using. We're on the rusty, so we're going to actually tame this sulfur geyser in that run, just as we've done below. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm starting it tomorrow. So hopefully I'll see you there tomorrow. But thanks for watching and uh, bye for now.